Hello everybody, Tatsuk01 here. Welcome back to another RPG Maker MV tutorial. This time instead of a plugin update, I'm going to show you how to recreate one of my favorite map dynamics. And that, and that is the map for Breath of Fire 4 from the PlayStation 1. Now there are many ways world maps are done in game. Uh, most commonly, it, you will see uh, the character just going all through the overworld. <clears throat> and then they go through uh, other maps, which is very common to do. Uh, another, th another thing is done is the player can go through set lines like you would see in Super Mario Brothers from the Super Nintendo. Or even the same as with uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, also for the Super Nintendo. Uh, those map dynamics work very well. A lot of those give you a great sense of scale about the worlds. Though the player goes through go, goes through each of the levels, a, pers a person playing the game can see like, wow, this world is really huge. Another way that maps are done is a map is, uh, is that a player essentially chooses the level through essentially a menu. They'll like in Artanelco, where you just go up and down, left or right, through the map, and you just get, hey, this is the name of this area, and you will go here. Now, a, couple, a number of other games also do that. But in Breath of Fire 4, it's a little different because you also get hidden map areas. And you might think, well, that's, that's not that difficult to do. And it's not, but you have to consider that this also involves a timer. Because when the player in Breath of Fire 4 in the map, when they actually travel through, you'll definitely see that <clears throat> along the pathways between point A and point B, there might be a point in the middle or two. And depending on those points, you can trigger different events, whether it's unlocking a new path on the map, some hidden event to discover, or it's just a empty little spot, maybe have a treasure or something, and that's it. And so, in this, I'm going to show you using common events and some switches, how to recreate this dynamic so you can make an overworld map to actually do the same thing where you can have hidden map areas that trigger the unlocking of other areas on the map. So let's begin. So first we're going to focus on here. Wait, I need to show my mouse. Ah, there we go. Great. So let's... So first I'm going to show you what I've recreated thus far. Camera, I'm a little down here. Thank you. So let's get started, shall we? Actually, wait, no, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to move this up here. So you can see right now in my game map here, I have a whole bunch of arrows and whatnot, and these are basically what you, you'll see in um, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, where you get to be like, oh, okay, I can move here or there. No, I didn't want to continue. I wanted new game. You silly, you silly goose. New game. So from Mystic Quest, uh, we have arrows that hey, these are indicators of hmm. I'm able to go in this direction, but I haven't done anything to do so. And you can see that I can't move to those. So we're going to go over that as well. You'll also need uh, Yan Fly's plugin for region map assignment. So you can actually assign region tiles to block players' players' locations. So here, I'm going to show you one thing. This guy's going to trigger the north end of the map. Yep. I don't know. So now you can see that I've unlocked this area up on top and because of the other maps that I have set for this demo um, the, a lot of the other events get triggered but the bottom one didn't get triggered 
Let's see, there you are. I'll talk to you. Hi. So now you can see, because I activated that event, I trigger another switch or variable to uh, to change the event. Stop moving, Cam. So, and if I move there, I'm just going to move once. And nothing more. I'm just using the mouse to control character. Region events. Don't allow me to move anywhere else. So, this is very controlled. So, instead of having something freeform, like you would see in something like Dragon Quest, uh, that you don't have that option here. So now we'll continue up top. So what we want to find is this center area here. Right here. So you can see something popped up, but because of our timer, we need to keep uh, it. Uh, bleh, we're using a parallel common event to actually do this. So we can keep track of our timer, keep track of our position, and even say, hey, do you even get a chance to do this? And you're even also given the option to forego this area for the map. So this, it's, the logic is pretty simple. But there's a lot to it when you get down to it. But if I want to go down, I need to trigger it. And now I'm in a new map area. You can change this so that way you don't have to do this. But this is, but this is what I want. This is what I like. Because I get to explore. If I don't go down, I don't unlock the new area. Even though I went to it, I don't, nothing happened. Nothing changed. Because I didn't fulfill something. And that is key when we're actually traveling around the world. So now I'm waiting to regenerate this. Great. I'm back here. So you see, I popped down because I know that my directions kept going down. My parallel event has stopped. And I've uncovered this, new, this area down here. And if I come back up, I pop up. And if I go here, this actually brings me down here just because I just kind of copy and paste this event. Like, oh, hey, cool. And it's going to bring me back up the other side over here. But this could be anything. It could be a fishing spot. It could be a cave. It could be an item. It could be anything. So now I'm going to show you basically how to recreate this. So first we're going to need a couple of things. Let's start with the parallel event that we need, that we have to trigger. Now we have to keep track of a couple of things. We have to keep track of our player's X and Y position. We need to do a, um, a sleep timer. And we need to check again on our player's position. And also we need to know where this tile is. Because we have to compare whether the player is still on that tile or not. Yeah, you can add. You can make this a little bit more complex by se by selecting. Oh, hey, am I on this particular map? And am I on this particular tile? You can do some of that, but we're not gonna go that deep. And you'll probably actually have to create a function to even do that, which you could do it as a parallel event, or you can write. You can script your own little plugin. So let's go to our database. Check out our common events. So a couple of simple things here, and I'll get over go over some of that earlier. But let's go over what we need first. So here is a comment that I've written out. Whoop, no, come on, show up. So here I have a variable for that I call player X. This is to keep track of my X position. Now, to get that, I need to go to Game Data, select Character, Player, Map X. This is going to give me my X position. The same is done with the variable 
that I've created for player Y. Same game data, player map Y. So I know where I am. So I store those, then I wait 150 frames. This is going to give me enough time to check, hmm, do I need, should, should, have I moved yet or not? Because we're traveling, we're traveling around and we're not going to be sitting here and waiting all the time. So 150 frames is sufficient. If you want more or less, you can, you are free to try that all over again. So here I do the same thing again, I capture those. I, I capture my X and Y. So now I have a bit of I have two ifs, two conditional statements. First, if I'm at X11, then if I'm also at Y24, then I'm gonna do one of two things based on two switches that I have. Because also, I have switches that tell me where in the map am I coming from. Am I coming from the left? Am I coming from the right? Am I coming from the bottom? Or am I coming from the top of the map? Because one thing that um, is done very well, I'm gonna scoot this up to the side here, is that in Mystic Quest, in Breath of Fire 4, and other RPGs that have this kind of map setup they keep you the player's movement is tracked so you can sense that i am traveling from point a from point from point a to point b using a certain path so if i'm coming from here i should pop up on the right side of the map but if i'm coming from here i should be coming i should show up at the left same bottom and then top So depending on where I am, based on the switch, if I'm coming from the left, all right, I'm still, so I didn't move, I stayed. So I'm gonna move my character so many spaces to the next spot because nothing happened. And then I'm gonna turn off the switch that triggered this event. Otherwise, if I'm coming from the other direction, I'm gonna move and turn off the switch that triggered this event. So this common event is a parallel event and it's triggered based on the switch I have here it is on WM, so WM for world map, secret tile one. This is my first secret tile of this map on the world map. I also have another switch where it says unlock secret world map area one. So this tells, so, this, so I need to keep track of Okay, I didn't, I didn't unlock the area, but I'm on it. I did something happened. Now I'm on this. I'm on this point. The second one says, I went to this point, and I did something to unlock it, so I have it forever. So let's go up a little bit. So here I have a common event that just triggers a simple script that ge randomly generates a number between 0 and 1000 plus 1 and then mod 2. Now the mod 2 is going to give me a 0 or 1. Basically am I going to make an odd number or an even number? So instead of checking uh, did I make a number greater than 5? Did I make a number less than uh, 573? Things like that. I don't care about that. Because I only need to know, did I do something or did I not do something? And doing, you know, a random number for a thousand is not that bad. It's pretty good. Because you saw in the demo, I had to do it a couple times before it actually triggered. So you could do this, here, uh, let's make a new piece here. In your event commands, tab 3, advanced, script. 
Here you can you can write your own JavaScript code for this common event that will be triggered. So here, and remember this is capital, it, it's case sensitive. Anything you do in RPG Maker when you're calling any of the functions in the in RPG Maker, they are all case sensitive. So here, we're say we're we're gonna go to our global variables. Here we're gonna do we want our game variables because these are variables now. This isn't a switch. You can do the same with switches to turn them on or off. But here I just want a game variable. So I'm saying I want to set the value for game variable six right here, comma this whole expression here in parentheses math dot floor math random asterisk 1000 close paren plus one mod two close paren don't forget you have to make sure you keep track of your open and your close parentheses Fine, so you close the whole thing up, semicolon. So this is going to store the value of that expression into variable 6. You can make it any variable you want. Just make sure that that's a variable that you are definitely going to keep track of to know, hey, this is going to be a thing. And this has no trigger, I just call it when I need it. And I have this, I don't actually use this, really. Or do I? I don't think so. I think I took it out. So let's look at... Let's look at this event here. So it's gonna do one of two things. It's either gonna bring me to this point, or it's gonna bring me to this point here. So first, I'm gonna set my directions. On my right, I'm not. I'm not gonna appear on the right side of a map. I'm gonna appear on the left. So I make sure that my right is off. I'll more than likely switch this to a common event that will adjust all my four switches to the appropriate direction. Then, so here, because I know where I'm going from, where I'm coming from, I'm going to the left. Now. I'm going to trigger my random number generator for the map event. So let's go back to that real quick. Because also, map discovery equals one. What is that? Well, if you remember, that was variable six. My variable six, I have called it map discovery. Did I find it? Did I find something? So now that we're back, all right, I see what's going on here. One, I found it. Basically true. So if this was a switch, I would set it to true. Otherwise, uh, it'd be zero, it'd be false. So one means I made an odd number, zero would be I made a zero. I mean, I made a, I've generated an even number. So because I found it, I'm only going to move so many spaces to reach this point. I'm going to do that little exclamation icon to say, hey, there's something here. Now, at the end, I trigger the switch that says, hey, I am now on the world map secret tile one. I turn that on. If I made an even number, if I didn't find it, I am just gonna move completely over to the side here. And I'm just gonna ensure that the switch that triggers that world map tile is off. I also have variables aside if you just notice here. I have variables controlling progression. So depending on where the player is in the story, 
or whatever events they triggered and whatnot, I say you've unlocked so much of this map. When I do reach this area and unlock the, the path down below, if I've triggered my uh, my unlock, then all I do is make sure I turn my, my right direction off, move over, and I turn my left direction on. So, the same thing happens on the other side, except now my directions are reversed. So now let's take a look at these two arrows. So they're very simple. It is simple. Below character, player touch. If I don't unlock anything, if I didn't go into that section of the map, I'm coming off that tile and I move and I set my direction. Even though I don't necessarily have to because I'm coming from the from this direction, I should really pay attention to where I'm coming from here. So I should really turn off, turn off my left. Because I'm coming on from the right, but here I come from the left. I need to pay attention to that. So there's just a couple of things that's why I should that's why I mentioned earlier that I'll probably change this out to a common event to set my directionals. So that way I only have to do it once. Otherwise, if I am if I unlocked it, I don't care, I'm just moving over and setting my direction. Likewise, same thing on the other opposite side. I'm making sure that these only trigger based on variable six. Did I find something? Again, did I hit that tile? I want to make sure that I hit that tile before I can even think about doing anything. And make sure that I'm that that um that I'm on it. That I find it and am I on it. If not, I shouldn't be seeing those two. Now let's look at here at this event. It's very simple. So if I'm coming from the left, if I'm gonna enter on the left side of the map, I'm just gonna pop up somewhere and face right. Otherwise, I'm coming from the right, plop somewhere, and I'm going to be facing towards the left. And this is only when I'm on the tile itself. However, after I unlock the tile, I need to pay attention to the bottom to make sure if I'm coming from the bottom, I need to pop up somewhere and face up. Now I can put this on the other side, but it doesn't make sense because I'll never be here and be able to come up. So when you want to think of these things, you want to think it complete, logically complete to make sure that you eliminate any possibilities of error first. Now let's look at this, this tile here. Notice how there is no arrow. That's because when I'm on it, I don't want to. Sh when I'm on this tile, I don't want to show anything. But I need to be able to restrict the character's movement, and I can't do that using a region regional tile, because eventually the char the player should unlock that area of the map and be able to move through. So this, instead of being below, at first this should be the same as character, so it'll be treated the same way as any NPC. I can't face through it, I'm not a ghost. Action trigger, but this has nothing. So basically, world map, and I'm on the tile, that's all I care about. But after I unlock the area, and I don't really need this, because it's kind of implicit that I've already unlocked enough of the map to get there, but I'd do it anyway. I just set the movement, the set the player movement, adjust my directionals, and that's it. 
And I have this little guy here. Actually, no, I want to keep that change. Because that's important. And then these guys, same thing, it's simple. All the arrows really do this exact same thing. And transfer player, blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the map this thing brings it to. So here, it's a very, very plain map. Nothing special. Let's look at the bottom one. This is the important piece here. So this has no conditions. But when I trigger it, once I touch it, I'm no longer on the secret tile. I don't care about that anymore because I've unlocked it now. Because to unlock it, I made the conditions. I just need to get out. I just need to escape through the map down. That's all I need to know. Turn off my left and rights because my arrows should set those directions and then I'm facing down on the world map. After I unlock the tile, all I do is set my direction down. Again, I need to control my switches. So this is the same, ev same event as the other one. Excuse me. So now these, th these events up top, they're very very, they're even simpler because all they do is they just move the player to that same tile on the world map. They don't do anything. But remember, when we hit this point of the map, our parallel event is still running. That is why we turn off that switch. Because we don't care about it anymore. We don't care about that parallel event to keep track. Otherwise, even if we land on it, I mean, if we don't turn it off, the parallel event will keep running. When we come back to the world map, and we don't move, it we're, it's going to capture our X and Y positions, and it's going to forcibly move us. We don't want that. That is bad. That's going to say, hey, I unlocked something, but I'm going to go over here now. I, I stopped caring about the last thing. No, that's bad design. So let's go through the demo once again. So here we see there's nothing. Hmm. I don't know. If this map was larger and I had more areas, I could pass by this a couple times and never realize something was here. Oh, I did something. Well, let's go down. Let's go this way. Arrows disappeared. That's what we like. Now, I'm not gonna touch anything. Good. Not gonna touch anything. Good. Let's try to go down. Yeah, it's gonna take us a little while to get it. Oh, there we go. No, I can't move down because this event, because that event is the same as the player. It's on the same plane. It's not above or below. So let's go in. So I was coming from the right side of the map, so I need to face left and appear on the right side. I'm not going to do it again for the other side. However, if I come out anywhere but the bottom, I haven't triggered this. Which is correct. That is exactly what I want. Let's go in, head to the bottom. So now, let's wait. Because if the parallel event is still running, we should be moving. So we haven't moved at all. 
So here, so that tells me that I did it correctly. I have turned off the parallel event that says, hey, am I here? Am I still here? If I'm still here, I need to move. The arrows show it up. I can move down. And my region blocking is set. So you can see here, at every path where there is not an arrow, everything is region blocked. So I am controlling every possible movement of the player. This will not work if you have 8 directional movement. Because that kind of behaves a little funky. Because you can then move diagonally, but you kind of also move two directions at once. I don't fully know the whole thing on those, but when you start doing reach and locking other events, eh, eh. But that is it. If you guys would like to see any any cool little tutorials, tips or tricks on RPG Maker, let me know and I will try to figure it out what it is to do that because there's a lot of tutorials out there, a lot of plugins, a lot has been done, but not everything. And this is one of those really cool things that I really like. So thank you everybody for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you like this, leave a like. And if you and for whatever else, I hope you have a great day. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.